Hello everyone, welcome back once again. In this video, we will explore Signal App and Blazor Server applications using the Visual Studio 2022. We will also look at the necessary components needed for us to get started. But before we get started, please make sure you like the video and subscribe to the channel. So let's get into it then. Signal R is a library for ASP.NET developers that simplifies the process of adding real-time web functionalities to applications. So the real-time web functionality is the ability to have server code push content to the connected clients instantly as it becomes available rather than having the server wait for a client to request a new data. And of course, Blazor is a framework for building interactive client-side web, web UI with .NET. So enough of all of that, let's get into the real stuff. So as you can see, yeah, I've got a Visual Studio installer opened, yeah? So let's go ahead and look at what component we need to get us started, yeah? So I'm actually using the Visual Studio 2022 so if you've got the installer open, let's click on the modify. So as you can see, I've got the, the workloads up. So what we do is we make sure that we make sure that the ASP.NET and web development box is checked. We download it and install it. Okay. So this actually helps us build web applications using ASP.NET Core, ASP.NET and webs and, and standard based web technologies including HTML, JavaScript, CSS and JSON. Also include tools for containerizing your application including Docker support. Okay. But if you really want to get into how to install the whole thing, yeah, I've got a video on Blazor. So you can have a look on the channel. Okay. So once you're done with this bit, yeah, let's close the, the Visual Studio installer. So let's open a new, let's create a new application, okay? So here, click on the create a new project. And we select Blazor from here, okay? So here, as you can see, the first one is a Blazor server app. So this is a project template for creating a Blazor server app that runs server-side inside the ASP.NET Core app and handles user interaction over signal app connections, okay? So this, the user interactions is actually handled over a signal app connection, okay? So this template can be used for a web app with rich dynamic user interfaces, okay? And we've also got a bunch of applications that you can build using the Blazor, okay? But for this video's sake, yeah, we're using that, the Blazor server app. So we click on the next. So obviously here you can configure your project details, but we're not gonna to look too much into that. So let's click on the next again. So here, obviously you can select the, the type of the .NET framework that is applicable to you. So for this video's sake, we're going to use the latest 7.0. And also, you can also um, configure the authentication types for the project. Yeah, so here there are a bunch of them that you can use. So you can use a non-authentication, individual accounts, Microsoft identity platforms, and Windows authentication. So let's go ahead and use the individual accounts, okay? And here, obviously, you can also configure for HTTPS, but it's not necessary for this video, but obviously, if you're using it for production, you're, you're building a project for production, I suggest you, you, you configure that as well, okay? So, you can also enable Docker. So, what is it? I'm not, I'm, we're not going to look too much into that. So, right now, we're going to click on the create, okay? So, this will actually create the, um, the project for us with the whole template and whatnot, yeah? Okay, so, there we have it. So we've, we've got the project template created for us. So let's go ahead and have a look at what is inside here. Yeah? So basically this video is to get us started. So we're not going to do any coding today, okay? So the properties contain a bunch of um, settings and whatnot. So this is a launch setting. Let's have a look at this. So it's got by specifying the, the URI and the port number and whatnot. Yeah? 
and then we've got service dependencies here as well. So this is the connection string of, um, for the um, for the database that will be used by the by the um, um, identity user. Okay, we we'll have a look at that later on. Okay, so we've got this folder, www roots folder, which contains the CSS, the fav icon, and whatnot. Yeah. Okay. So we've got a bunch of um, CSS inside for the project templates. And we've got our areas. So this contains the identity for authentication, authorization and authentication, okay? So this is a revalidation authentication state provider. We're not going to look too much into the, the code, okay? But this, this the page also con contains the logout and shared page for the login as well, okay? So we're not going to look too much. Let's have a look at what is inside here. So basically, this is just uh, the usual stuff for um, for the user validation. Okay. So let's go ahead and go to the data. So basically, it's got a bunch of migration files as well. Yeah. So and this the application database contest. Yes, which inherits from <clears throat> identity contest. Okay. So this this will actually help create automatically the um, it, it will help to create a database and add um, the tables for the user as well, okay? And we've got um, this model for the weather forecast. So this is just um, to test the connections between the client and the server in terms of um, <clears throat> sending um, data in between. So this is the service. This is the service for the weather forecast model. Yeah, so this actually populates the model with a bunch of data, okay? And then we've got pages here. So the pages contains the razor files. So let's have a look at the host here. So the host also, yeah, this actually helps with the signal R connection, yeah? So basically this will actually help connect the, the client and the server, okay? And we've got in this, so this is just the starting page of the application. And we've got fetch data. So the fetch data, obviously we'll grab the data from the server, like from um, the data created by the, the weather forecast services, okay? So let's go to the shared bit. So, so this actually contains the main layout. Yeah, so it's nothing really fancy. It's just the main layout and navigation menu and whatnot, okay? And then we've got um, the survey prompt, so this is just um, for the template. And we've got the login display, so basically this is just uh, the login details, I mean, the register and whatnot, okay? So let's go to the app.razor. So this is, this is just the usual stuff. And and the app settings. So the app settings, obviously, we've got um, the the database connection string. Yeah. So if we looked at it previously, well, the the app settings here on the on the property side. So as you can see, it's, it's referencing a default connection. So this is where you find the default connection. Uh, so this is the default connection with the database connection string, okay? So let's have a look at the, the program.cs as well. So this contains all the configurations for the for the for the project, yeah. And this is how the signal R is mapped. So as you can see, yeah, this is the signal 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 R URI, yeah, which is um, just a forward slash underscore post. And this is the map blazer app. Yeah, first it used to be map map um, signal signal R hub, but right now it's just a blazer app. Yeah, so to use the signal R, you need to make sure that you've got app the map blazer app. Yeah, so this will actually start running the signal R. Okay, and then and the user authorization. This is just to register that um, we're using a, a user based um, authentication. Okay, so. Um, last but not the least, let's try and, and run it to see what actually comes out of it. Okay, so let's click F5 or let's click on this play button here. So 
this will actually run the application. So I'm just going to pause the video while the whole thing runs. So as you can see here now, it's actually got a, um, the, the application running now, okay? So here, obviously, is there's nothing really. So you can click on the register. And you fill in the details and you click register. Obviously, once you do it that yeah, the database will be created and pop um, and the user details will be populated into the tables, okay? And yeah, so I'm not gonna show you a lot of yeah, but just this is just a video to get you started. So on our next video, obviously we'll start from scratch, yeah, and see how we can do the whole thing, yeah, configure the whole thing yeah, from scratch so that you get the feel of it. Yeah. So once again, yeah, please like the video if you haven't and make sure you subscribe to the channel if you haven't. I hope you have a good morning, afternoon, evening, wherever you are. Peace.